Welcome to the Sovereign CEO Podcast. I am Caleb Jones, and this is where we talk about how to create location-independent income through your own location-independent business, move to a less bad country, or at least set up an international backup plan and do all these things for a very little money to that really quick. All four of our residency programs are currently open. You need to go to calebjones.com. That is C-A-L-E-B as in boy jones.com slash events. We have get residency in Mexico, get residency in Dubai, get residency in Armenia, and get residency in Paraguay. They're all open now, but there are deadlines for all these events. Check those out. You don't want to miss these. This is something you have interest in because this is the least expensive way you're able to do this. If you hire Andrew Henderson, God bless him, a nomad capitalist, he's going to charge you at least $75,000 plus do this. You can do these for just a few thousand bucks, all of them. Cool? Cool. Don't miss this stuff. <clears throat> and coming up, <clears throat> excuse me, I will have a video on the Sovereign CEO channel, YouTube channel, where I'll be addressing Q&A questions we're getting on residencies for those four countries. United Arab Emirates, Mexico, Paraguay, and Armenia. Um, if you're watching the video version of this, you might have noticed that uh, my background has changed. I am finally back in Dubai. Uh, maybe I look a little less tired than I've been looking because <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> uh, the chaos and uh, transitions or most of them are now over with that I've been through the last few weeks. And uh, it's, it's just a very nice thing to be back home here in Dubai, even though it is September and it is hot. So but that's fine. I'll take, a, I'll take some heat for a few weeks a year to pay almost zero taxes. I'll, I'll take that deal. That's fine. No problem. Happy to do it. Um, if you were curious, uh, this is not my apartment. I have just put a, a deposit down on an apartment, which is literally next door for this hotel. I'm in a hotel for, let's see, I've been here for about five, six days. I'll probably be here another five, six days or so until my apartment closes. I'm actually battling another guy for this apartment unit. Uh, we find out in a day or two if I get it. I, I'm pretty sure I will. Uh, there are so many people moving to Dubai. It's like a madhouse here, trying to get apartments and houses. And, and I'm going after an apartment that's little. And there's like multiple offers. The same apartment's crazy. And it's a little apartment. It's tiny. It's a, it's a one, it's not studio. It's a one bedroom apartment. Those of you who don't know, my wife will be in the, in the United States for the next few months. So I'm going to basically be living like a bachelor the next few months. I'm just going to put my head down and fucking work. And so I'm in a small apartment because that's all I need to work. It's really to me a glorified office with a kitchen. I don't even consider it an apartment. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to move in a couch in there and just sleep on the couch. Probably not even going to have a bed because I don't need a bed. And uh, Pink Fireflies bought some nice couches we have here. We have our, our, our furniture and storage units. So I might just sleep on a couch. I made that decision yet, but probably. And yes, I will do a full, when I'm all moved in in a week or two, I'll do a full walkthrough, move in, and I'll, I'll show you everything and how I have it all arrayed, and it'll, it'll be great. So <clears throat> I'm kind of just killing time here in this fucking hotel until I can move into my apartment, which will probably be another few more days. And uh, what I would like to discuss in this podcast I've never said thing like I've never said this. What I would like to talk about is today's topic is it's so formal. Um, this is probably the next installment in the ongoing series where I just kind of discuss what I'm going through and what uh, my distinctions I've made and what I'm planning on doing. And this one's gonna be a lot more positive than prior iterations of this uh, this very loose series I have going at this podcast. Um, as I mentioned. The vast majority of the problems I was, I was encountering in my companies and various other things, and this transition I was going through, moving around the world and all this garbage, that's pretty much done now. There's a few lingering things that are serious but need to be fixed, and they'll be fixed the next, let's see, next 17, 18 days, and then we're good to go. We're actually going to be much stronger. And so now, uh, now that that chaos is over, I can get back into my normal mode of strategic planning, setting my goals, what I want to do, working hard, and making sure that my companies are arrayed in a way that I want them based on the income that I want. And um, I think I may have mentioned before in prior versions of this podcast where I've talked to various people who I trust, business owners, in businesses that are, I don't want to say similar to mine. Some of them are similar to mine. Some of them are very radically different than mine, but these are, these are people I trust because they are far more financially successful than I am. And I've all I've run past my what I how much money I would like to make in my companies uh, before I turn 54. I am 51 and a half. I have two and a half years to hit certain goals, and I have some very big goals for the next two years. And I've already accomplished a lot, but I have more to go. And I don't want to have these goals not done by the time I turn 54, which will be April of what 2020. I don't know, two and a half years from now, whatever the fuck that is. 
So, and all of them have said to me, well, yeah, he can totally do that. That's very doable. Matter of fact, he can do it before that. So, um, plus what I've also done is, as I mentioned, I've hired a new CFO. Uh, I have several new people in marketing positions in my companies. Uh, if you were curious, so I have a joint ventures person and all she does is manage all my, manage and find for me joint ventures. She just plugs me into existing JVs, huge. Uh, my Instagram cold marketing, we do Instagram shout outs. I have an Instagram not guy, guy now focuses on nothing but Instagram. Paid ads, not organic. I don't do organic shit anymore. I stopped doing that many months ago. I don't do that anymore, no more, no more. But paid stuff, I'm all about that. Those, we're revamping our YouTube ads. We're working on that now, that's the next project. We're working on that as a separate project. <clears throat> I have um, a sales team in place now. I've got a bunch of people in place that I need to have in place to take my companies to a level where I need them to go. And I have never had this before. So this is the good news. The good news is I now have the team and the assets in place to really take off. Whereas the last few years we've been growing, but it's been growing in spite of the fact that I was missing certain assets or I didn't know how to manage certain aspects of the company correctly and things like that. So now we have all these assets in place in terms of uh, marketing, finance, and then implementation. Our coaching team is fucking amazing. Billy's team is fucking amazing. God damn, they're so good. And so I have all, this, all these assets in place now, and that's part of what I've been doing the last few months, is arraying all these assets and putting them in the right place, spending the money I need to spend, <laughs> which was uh, hurt because I hate spending money. But, um, and, and we're not done, I'm not done. This is gonna be another, I would say, Oh, I don't know, 45 days from now until this is 100% dialed in, perfect, everything is arrayed where it needs to be. But it's, but 45 days is pretty quick. It's not very long off. So that plus I've made some changes in my financial life. I've made a few tweaks in my personal life to get to, to build a foundation for where I'm about to go. Okay. And I was thinking over the last week or two, uh, doing some strategic planning of my own and I'll, I'll be more specific in a few minutes on why I do this and why I do this now in September and things like that. Um, where now that I have these assets in place and now that I know that, oh, here's another piece to this. I didn't, I didn't forgot to mention this. One of the things I had, a, I had to meet with my CFO. I have, I meet with him twice a week now. And this is an extremely sharp guy. This is a guy who I don't want to say the name of the company. Uh, he was the former CFO of a gigantic international multi-billion dollar company. Uh, and so now he's my CFO. Ooh, I mean, I tell you, I got heavy hitters now. This is great. And we um, did all the, the business plan, cash flow forecasting, things like that, things I've never done before, okay? And I told him, okay, here's how much money I want to make. Here's how much I want to gross in terms of, now this is in terms of, I have several companies, but we're talking here, I'm trying to keep this focused, on my, my internet company, my sovereign CEO brand, Alpha Male 2.0 brand, on the umbrella of uh, my corporation or an LLC, it's called DCS International. So that particular company, okay? I said, this is exactly how much I want to make in terms of gross revenue and how much I want to net in terms of free cash every month. Free cash flow, net profit, I mean, net, net, net profit before taxes. Boom. At the, at the end of every month, I want this amount of money to pull out the business if I choose to. And uh, so here's, so your mission CFO, I want you to make a, a financial plan, a business plan, and I need to help him, where we hit that number as soon as we can hit it. As soon as we can hit it. Now, again, the ultimate deadline for this is two and a half years from now before I turn 54, when I'm still 53 or less. And uh, he's working on that now. I think we're able to do this in maybe a year, year and a half. Oof, amazing. I think we can do it. And um, now he made up, so he brought up some good points, points that I was already thinking about. He said, uh, and this is, this is a good sign when you hire very, you know, heavy hitters and they say things you're already thinking because that means you're thinking in the wrong, the wrong correct viewpoints, correct, correct, you know, directions. He's like, well, if you made that kind of money right now in terms of net profit, would you pull it out of, all out of the company? I said, no, I wouldn't do it now. Oh, no, 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 no. I want the free profit right now. What I do is I'd, I'd pay down some debt. I'd put more money in terms of cash, in terms of savings accounts for the business. And we have various uh, uh, goals. I have various goals for 
I want the finances of the business arrayed. I said, once we have this in place, this in place, and this in place, which will take a few months of making that money, and maybe by the, and maybe by the time we're making that kind of money, we may not have these problems anymore, we probably won't. Then at that point, I will take out that income for myself in terms of personal income, monthly income for myself. He's like, oh good, I'm glad you said that. Because <laughs> I'm sure there are business owners who just say, oh, I'll just take the money, fuck the business. I'm like, oh no, no, no. I want the business to be 100% rock solid, and then I take the money out, okay, on a monthly basis. So, so we have that, plus everything else I've talked about. So a decision I made, and I had to think through this decision, but I usually don't take very long time to make these decisions. Decision I made last uh, two weeks or so, I think this, I made this decision right before I left Mexico, is I'm gonna make, my goal is, my new goal, and this is gonna be an aggressive goal for me, and I'll tell you why in a second. I'm gonna make 2024 the best year I've ever had in my entire life. What? Now, people say that, it's gonna be the best year of my life. It's different when I say it, because I live a dream life already. I have said many times, my 40s, <clears throat> I'm 51, my 40s was a paradise. The best decade of my life by far, and my 20s was pretty goddamn good. Uh, my 30s was not. My 30s was difficult slash chaotic. So half my 30s was bad. The second half was not bad, but a lot of chaos. So my 40s was beyond insane. There were many years in my 40s that were the best years of my life that kept topping each other. I've had some amazing, amazing years lately. And I'm not talking about like most men my age, like, well, I used to have a great time, you know, 25 years ago when I was 22. No, 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 no. My 40s. Oh my God. I've mentioned this many times before in blog posts and podcasts. So for me to say 2024 is the best year, going to be the best year of my life, that is a very high bar. That's going to be difficult because <laughs> I have a lot of really good fucking years in my 20s and many in my 40s that were even better than my 20s. So this is a high bar. This is going to be difficult. I think I can do it or else I wouldn't have set the goal. And I have mentioned in the past and I've been very clear about this. This has been an ongoing thing. My big objective is to make my 50s better than my 40s were. And I've said the same thing. That's gonna be really hard because my 40s were fucking amazing. Financially, personal life, uh, uh, gains I made by per and my health, across the board, amazing. My family life, amazing, amazing. I live a dream life, okay? And so and I've said in the past, that's gonna be really hard because when you're in your 50s, uh, you're older, <laughs> you're in your 50s. In your 40s, you're not in your 50s, you're in your 40s. You hit 50s, and that's even harder, right? So even with the fact that I'm in my 50s, I still have to make my 50s better than my 40s. And I've just decided next year, 51 age for me, age 51 slash 52 is my birthday's in, in uh, April. This is gonna be the best year of my life, 2024. And I've never set a goal like this before. That's how you know I'm being, I'm being real about this shit. I have never set a goal in my life saying next year is going to be the best year of my life. I have had years where I said, I think next year might be a great year. I think next year is going to be awesome. I think next year is the best year. I've, I've said that, but I've never set a goal for this. Okay? So this is an aggressive goal for me. So, and by the way, this is the best year of my life. I didn't say I'm going to make the most amount of money I've ever made, although I, I might. I probably will. It's not in one, I'm going to have the best woman life I've ever had in my life or the best fitness. No, my entire life, all of it together in a big, big, big ball. Yeah, it's going to be hard. <laughs> That's why I had to think for, for a little bit on, do I really want to set this goal for myself? Because this going to be hard. All right, fine. So how am I going to go about doing this? I will devote a second podcast down there, not the next podcast we have in the series, but Maybe the next podcast I have in this series in a few podcasts in a few weeks. I will give you more detail on how I'm strategically planning out the year to make that happen. But I'll give you a teaser here. What I am doing is a concept that um, I believe was pioneered by Cal Newport. If you know who that is, um, he's, a, he's a productivity author. He's like a, he's not a businessman, he's a college professor. So I kind of take what they say with a grain of salt because they're not business owners. But... He's a YouTuber guy and you know he, he has a presence on the internet and seems like a nice guy, he's a family guy. But um, I believe he first pioneered this concept. I could be wrong, 
I think it was him, where his concept, if it is him, and if you are a Cal Newport follower or your Cal Newport watches the video, I apologize if this wasn't you. Or, or if you're the person who pioneered this and it, and it wasn't Cal Newport, I apologize to you, but I think this is who it was. His concept is, what you do is you, you plan the year in like next year. You don't do that in December. You do it in like July, June, July, August. You do it in there. And, or maybe even September. So between like June and September, that's when you attack the next year. You don't wait till December, which is typically what I do. I've said many times, I'll take the week between Christmas and New Year's and I'll plan the next year. I'll take several days to just plan the next year. It's a really fun time for me. My favorite day of the year is January 2nd. More than my birthday, more than Christmas. I love that day because it's a new year. Oh, it's very exciting. I'm getting excited to just think about this. And his concept is, that's dumb. What you instead do is you plan everything out like in September, let's say, because this is September as I'm recording this. So now you got September, October, November, December, you got four months, maybe four and a half, three and a half months to get everything in place to just take off in January. He said, so if you do that, while all your friends the first week of January are reading Atomic Habits and getting a gym membership, you're already there. You've already lost the weight. You're already making the money. You're already in full force. You're that steam train going down the tracks already. You're way past these motherfuckers. So why wait till December to attack the year now? Ah, good point. Especially if you're like me and you want to make 2024 the best year of your life and your life is full of amazing, awesome fucking years because it's a very high bar. So what I'm starting to do now is between the increased workload that I have, which is significant right now because I'm still doing these transitions, I am as best I can mapping out the things I need to focus on for next year and I also, the goals I need to set for not only the end of this quarter, which is the end of September, but also quarter four of 2023. So I, I've mentioned this before, I operate based on quarters, okay? And so I'm gonna have to hit this month really hard and the final quarter of 2023 hard so that I hit the ground running January 2nd of next year. By January 2nd, all these systems I need to implement will already be in place. Instead of you initiate the system starting January 2nd. Okay, now I gotta start losing weight. Now I gotta go to the gym. Now I gotta focus on my go time. Now I gotta focus on marketing. Now I gotta start my business. No, 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 no. You do that in the fourth quarter of the prior year. That's what I'm doing. Um, I am not done doing this. So that's why I'll wait for the next pot, next installment in the series to tell you exactly how I'm kind of mapping it. Maybe not exactly, I can't tell you everything, but how I'm mapping out the year, how I'm planning out the year. I've, I have articles about this. Certainly you read my book, The Unchained Man. I have an entire uh, chapter on time management where I, have, where I talk a little bit about mapping out the year. Uh, I will do a full thing on this on exactly what I'm doing because I need to account for everything next year. This will be the best year of my life, 2024. I have to account for my companies, all of them, my finances, and my finances are somewhat complex. I have investments, I have multiple companies, I have five flags, I have different countries, okay? So that's that. My personal life, which is amazing, but amazing can always be improved. And as I've talked about, as you grow uh, over my other, my other channel, Alpha Male 2.0, as a man grows and as a woman grows, you're gonna want slightly different things. So that could be tweaked. Um, certainly my health, my fitness, which is my weak area, those things. I have to tackle all these things. Also, my family. I made a decision a few weeks ago. I don't know if I mentioned this in these podcasts. I don't think I have. To be more in touch with the people in my family who I consider important. Because I think I've been neglecting them. And so, by the way, those people, besides my wife, which is obvious, would be my mom and my dad and my two children, who are both grown. And so I had an interesting conversation with my daughter uh, when I was in the United States briefly, <clears throat> when I was moving around. I was in Portland for a few days. I had dinner with her and her boyfriend. And um, I said, uh, she was complaining I didn't talk. She was complaining I was not a good dad. I said, why am I not a good dad? I'm a good dad. She's like, no, you're not. You're a bad dad. She's partially sar sarcastic, but partially not. And I said, why am I a bad dad? She's like, well, you don't talk to your daughter enough. I said, all right. I said, tell me. I said this to her. I said, tell me how often. Now, to put this in context, my daughter's 25. Okay, this is a grown woman. 
a good dad, how often does a good dad contact his 25 year old daughter who lives in another country? How often? Is that every week? Is it every day? And she goes, no, 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 no. I said, well, thank God. Because my sisters will call my mom every day, literally. So one sister lives in the same city as my mom. One sister lives in a different city, but still in the United States. My sisters who are, you know, in their late forties will call my mom who's in her eighties every fucking day. And I had flashbacks of, oh my God, my daughter wants me to call her every day. Please God, no, please no. But thank God my daughter is more introverted, a little more independent. So uh, a little more like me. So she said once a month. I said, we talk once a month. She goes, no, we don't. And I thought about it, well, actually, we probably don't. <laughs> so I have now on my agenda to talk to my daughter once a month and my son. I just saw my son a few times in Guadalajara. So we have that too, but my son too. And, and I also, I've talked, I have it in my system to talk to my son, not about business because I work with my son. So usually when we're talking, we're talking about work. To talk about just purely, I had dinner with him, just he, me and him alone the night before I left Guadalajara, uh, like, yeah, before Guadalajara, and we just talked about, we just talked. It wasn't about work, it was great. And so to do that more often with my son, and my mom, and my dad, which is why, unfortunately, it's the bad part, you know, quarter, uh, last quarter of 2024, 23, excuse me, I'm mixing these two years up. I'm gonna fly back to, to the United States to, for Christmas. I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do this. I do this for my dad. He was very strong about this. He was like, please, you need to you know, visit your family. I, I think I missed this. So I'm going to fly back to the United States for Christmas this year, okay? Which is like the worst time to fly and it's going to be a hassle. But again, I want to make sure that I'm reaching out to the family members who are important to me. That's another decision I've made. On top of the fact, both my parents are in their 80s. Um, and in your 80s, your health isn't that great. Their health isn't bad, but it's not good. They're in their 80s. So who knows how long I have to have my parents on this earth? That's another factor. So there you go. So that's it. Um, we'll see if I accomplish this. I guess what I'll do is I'll do a podcast late next year telling you whether or not I've achieved this goal of having 2024 be the best year of my life. I think my odds of success are, at the moment, I may change my mind on this, at the moment my odds of success are about 65% to make 2024 the best year of my entire life. 65%, which is better than 50, but not super high. There, maybe there's some few things I can do over the next few weeks to crank that up to maybe 70%. I don't know. Because like I said, it's going to be hard. We'll see if I can pull this off. And again, I will do a podcast coming up shortly where I will kind of map out the process I'm doing and how I plan out that year. Cool? Cool. All right. That's it. I will see you next podcast. Boy.